the workload was obviously high and the stress levels were definitely increasing coming into the last few days. But when you look in hindsight, post the event, it was by far all worth it. Like I couldn't have asked for anything better. Obviously the money we raised and the response we got from the athletes, the response we got from the spectators, the businesses involved, everyone that was involved with game time this year, it was only positive stuff. So you look at it in hindsight and you know at the time you're thinking, fire out, this is hectic and there's a lot going on and the thought processes, the stress levels of workload, all that is pretty high. But then you step back and take a look back and after it's all done, you think it couldn't have gone much better and it was all 110% worth it. I found the Smith family five years ago, I think it was around about the time that I started Velocity. Um, and it came to me in the sense of, I'd been so fortunate through growing up from when I was little and me and my sister and all my friends and everyone who I'd been involved with, you know, 99% of us had been super, super fortunate being able to get whatever we ever wanted. So when I found the Smith family and saw the work that they do for kids who are either you know, financially not supported or are homeless or haven't gotten the support from the family environment, hence by the Smith family. Um, that was something that really appealed to me. So when, each year we've done some stuff for them, some years bigger, some years smaller, um, but when this sort of opportunity arose and we thought, now let's give this game time competition a crack and see how well we can make it go, there was nothing better than me to link with the Smith family. My name's Alan LeMay, I'm the general manager for the Smith family in Queensland. So my role is about uh, providing leadership to the team of staff and volunteers who support families throughout Queensland. I also do a bit of external engagement, working with our funders, corporate partners, our schools, our universities, um, and just make sure everybody's all working together to achieve the same goals. The Smith family's got a lot of history. We've been around since 1922. We began at Christmas time with a group of businessmen gathering Christmas hampers together for, for children whose families were doing it tough. That was the beginnings of the Smith family and we still gather together uh, Christmas hampers and distribute them to families at Christmas time. But that's not our core business these days. The core business of the Smith family is to support children whose families are doing it tough financially with their education journey and outcomes. We want to see these kids do well at school and go on to find meaningful employment. We're about breaking the cycle of dependency on welfare, um, of joblessness, of poverty, by seeing their kids become meaningfully employed. So that's our objective, that's what we work towards. And we've right now, in Queensland, we've got 10,000 children on our scholarship program that we're supporting with comprehensive support to achieve well at school. Across the country, 57,000 children are currently sponsored by the Smith family. So the funds raised um, through the Game Time event are going to go towards the wraparound services that we provide our sponsored young people. It's going to help fund learning clubs, the um, reading programs, mentoring programs for young people. Young people whose families are doing it tough financially and they might not be able to afford the necessary tutoring support that their child might need. So we're going to provide those programs and the funds raised through the Game Time event are going to go towards supporting those programs. I can tell you what, if I didn't have Lana on board, the event wouldn't have gone ahead. Um, she came into it not probably knowing, same as I didn't really know how big it was going to get. And as the weeks went on, and obviously we started playing this weeks and weeks and weeks, months and months in advance, and we started to realise it was getting bigger and bigger, I think we both started to be like, all right, lucky, lucky you're on board and lucky you're good to go. I came on board probably about 10 weeks before game time itself. Um, not much had been planned yet for the event, apart from the actual events themselves. Um, we pretty much had that 10 weeks to plan the entire two days, so get all the sponsorships organised, um, plan how the events would run, um, get all the athletes signed up and all of that, all the way up until the actual competition. So when, again, we realised that game time was going bigger than what we initially wanted it to or thought it was going to be, um, I pretty much was very lucky and fortunate that we had enough procedures in the other businesses that we look after to sort of let them run on their own. Uh, my business partners were happy to take a bit more load and, and knew that this was important to me and, and, and obviously having lines in there as well, we just knew that it was going to be all hands on deck and just go. We obviously couldn't really set up anything until the actual day of competition since the gym was being used all week. Um, so it was a bit 
bit stressful on that front, but we had a lot of people come on board and help us and always so many people around willing to help, which made it a lot easier. That was probably, to be fair, the best way I thought we could have opened the event. I thought having a bit of a heavier barbell in there for obviously those that could get to the heavy barbell. And you know, even for those that couldn't, they were at least testing themselves and they had a period of time to be able to test themselves. This is actually probably my favourite event to watch. It was probably the most, I think it was the most exciting event to watch. About to go and do the first workout. And um, yeah, I don't know whether to send it or pace myself. Still, I think I might get a little bit of inspiration when I'm out there and still what I should do. <laughs> Uh, not sure how we went, but uh, it hurt a lot. Uh, yeah, can't wait to go to the next one. Uh, I think we were pretty good first one, only because I know some of the other scores and I think we beat a few by one rep, so it's a good start. Yep, very happy with it. It was very well programmed, nice and tight, no room to stand around, even though I did a little bit and he picked me up. How's no good man? <laughs> Skiing sucks. Why it's easier. <laughs> That was fantastic. I would have rather had um, beers in between rather than ski, but can't win them all. Yeah. <laughs> beers would have been good. Frostbit. Frostbit. We're good. We got to do the workout and we got to the max reps at the end and we got one. Which is more than we've ever got before. So. For some people to get to the third bar was a massive achievement and that again is what competition in my eyes is also about. It's all well and good winning of course, but uh, to have those little things is pretty cool and I think that first event really highlighted that. Some people weren't getting to the heaviest bar, but they were getting to the second or third bar and for them that's a massive achievement and, and they were stoked from that. We had spectators all around the outside of that event, which was pretty cool. Having everyone surrounding the event and cheering from all sides made it pretty intense and exciting. The hype that we had through here obviously uh, was unreal having so many people around and I don't think that event personally could have gone much better in my eyes. The big chipper. Um, a chipper is my sort of workout, so it was cool for me to get that sort of, when I was writing that one up um, and thinking how it's all going to flow through, I sort of just related to what I would like to see and sort of the fun that I want to have. Um, and I think, you know, throwing the toe ring in there, a lot of people hadn't done that before. That was probably a cool thing to see how people adapted to it, obviously when it got released first. I'm looking forward to seeing how I pull up tomorrow. I think they all probably went into that last one thinking, oh, it's not too bad. Uh, but obviously having the high volume and that bike was a trap, so that's why I wanted to put that in there. Uh, it's a bit different to an assault bike, so the fact that going from that, going from the snatches into that, into the air squats, and then obviously finishing with burpees was the plan. So I've heard a few people say they're a bit sore, so I'll be interested to see how they pull up tomorrow. Obviously, as I said, I, I announced event seven, which is the run, so it'll be cool to see how they can link that into that and, and the recovery they all have. So. Looking forward to them uh, pulling up from that, and I think overall I, I'm pretty happy with how day one went. So I hope everyone else is, is loving it and they're all stoked as well. Because I've been to comps in the past, and I've known that some days it's too long, some days it's too short, some days it's too dominant this, some days it's not enough dominant in this. Um, we sort of thought, all right, let's put it all together. Let's put it into a roster of the two events on the Friday night and then the four on the Saturday. Um, and then from that, we swapped and changed some. We, maybe, we initially thought we were going to be on the Friday, we then moved them into the Saturday, the Saturday into the Friday, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So what we tried to do was, after we'd done a little bit of uh, mixing and matching, sort of swapping around and whatnot, we feel as though the Friday tested what we needed to on the Friday to pre-exhaust for the Saturday. Uh, and then the Saturday was really the test day in the sense that, yeah, okay, you might be sitting here on the leaderboard or you might have done these already. 
now it's time to back it up for a full day worth of work. I spoke to a lot of those guys before the event, once they found out what it was, and they knew they'd have to do handstand push-ups, but once it was announced that they'd be doing it in conjunction with thrusters under fatigue, a lot of shoulders, a lot of upper body, um, people were a bit nervous about that one. The RX guys, I don't think, realise the severity of the war walls pre-working into the handstand push-ups and the thrusters. A lot of guys were focusing on the handstand push-ups being the killer. Um, I don't think they realised that the war walls pre were actually going to be a big burner in the sense of leading into what's about to come and that's why it was called upside down was because obviously they're doing so much upside down work where you know same thing squatting and throwing uh squatting and pressing and then going upside down to do the theoretically pressing from the from upper body as opposed to lower body is a is another movement where i don't think they really linked it all together it was cool to see a lot of them mid-workout be like oh we're in for some some work here that was pretty sick from my from my eyes but again there was lots of teams who approach it the right way and definitely got through the workout how it was meant to get done, which is sweet as well. CrossFit in January of 2016. Uh, my cousin James, he, uh, he owned a gym in South Australia and I saw him doing a workout and I was like, oh, that was cool. Like, I want to give that a try. So I ended up moving down there and just started CrossFit and then immediately was like, yeah, okay, I want to I be good at this. I wanted to be good at it before um, and so, yeah, I just started doing it and started training every day. And then, and so I made top 30 in my region the following year, 2017. And I competed at regionals, did that for two years. And then they canceled regionals, rest in peace. Um, they moved to sanctionals. So in order to qualify for the games at regionals, you had to place top five. And so the year after when they took away regionals, you had to finish first at a sanctional to qualify. So I went to a sanctional, that was in, oh, what year was that? 2019, and I came third. I only had to come second, but I ended up coming third. Now it's a bit, that sucked, but. And then I just took some time off and then moved back up to Queensland. Um, and yeah, moved in with my, my partner T and, and then I needed to find another CrossFit box and Luckily I found 4165 and yeah, I've been here ever since. So it's been awesome. So when you have like a two day comp, it's like, it's kind of the same amount of volume you would have on a regular day of training. Like when you think about it, you're only doing three workouts a day and they're, you know, 12 to, 12 to 20 minutes long. Like the longest we had was like 30 minutes. So when you add it all up in a day, it's like, it's like 45 minutes of working out. So it's like your average day less, but it's just the intensity that you do it at. Like you're going at like maximum capacity. So like that has a residual effect. So like if I did 45 minutes on training, like regularly, I probably wouldn't be as sore. Like right now I feel like my traps are like in my ears. I'm just like, oh my gosh, so sore. But yeah, you just, when you go into competition because you're, you're doing like maximum effort, it just takes so much more out of you. But if you've been doing it for long enough, you sort of, that's, you just get used to it, so. Well, but now I see him, like, the way that she had handled things, the way that she's sort of told me how things have gone in her uh, training career, and, you know, like, she was playing soccer in the States, she came back, and she's like, oh, I want to try something else out. Start ripping a barbell around, start getting functional fit, and now, she, you know, she's finished off being what, I think mean, she was the second best in Australia for a fair period of while, going to regionals and stuff. She's, 
gone overseas to represent Australia, she's gone overseas to represent herself. All those things, it's, it's awesome to see and to have her involved in not only game time, but the gym and my life personally and the way that she sort of rubs off on everyone else is, is awesome. Uh, event 4, general consensus from event 4 was that it was the worst workout of the entire weekend. I was just absolutely, like for me, I was just waiting for that workout. I just wanted to see people get on and just see their face just absolutely struggle. See their legs just die, see them just fall over at the end. I actually was waiting for some vomit and unfortunately it didn't come through, but I knew that, and you know, anyone who's sort of had done a bit of that work or anyone who has some knowledge on that sort of stuff, assault bike into sled, you know it's going to hurt. The workouts were both designed that you had to go 110% the whole way. That there was no other excuse, there's no other way to get around it. You had to go as hard as you could on the assault bike, get into the sled as fast as you could, and get back on that assault bike, whether it was the faster or the stronger. Both you had to go at 100%. My eyes, it couldn't have gone better. It was exactly what I wanted to have happen, where people were hurting and you know, having people rolling off to the sides and just lying there. One of the guys from the gym was telling me that he didn't see his partner until the uh, marshalling for the next event because he, they were all just split off struggled in their own areas and then came back. So hearing that that was the outcome of it all was exactly what we were looking for. The lower body burn by this point would have been pretty jacked. Yeah, coming off the back of event four, the, the fifth event would have been pretty hard. It was also a pretty lower body based event. The, the roller into the burpees, I don't think people realise how bad it was going to be. They would have saw the number, they would have saw the time frame and realised, yeah, okay, like, I know I can row at this pace and get it done at this time and then the burpees going to get done. I don't think they realised that linking it together so many times within the break and then to link it again on the opposite was going to be such a killer. People don't think the guys went into that thinking this is going to be as bad as what it was and especially coming off the sledding assault I worked out. So I knew from my end how bad it was going to be and that's where I guess, again, it's a bit of fun from us, you know, like we put all the hours and all the stress and all the time and stuff into it behind the scenes. So when it's on a day and you're not, there's not much more you can really do, then obviously just make sure the event goes well. That's when you get the enjoyment of seeing people really start to struggle and that's what I like about it. So that was pretty fun. I think going into any sort of competition, you know, people go into it being like, I want to, I've done it in the past, where you go to comps and you think, I want to win this. And that's all well and good, but there's also things where if you can look past the winning of events and winning of competitions over a 12 month period and look back to where you were 12 months ago or you know, 12 weeks ago when some people started prep for this comp in particular, from what they were starting at, and this obviously applies to a lot of my guys from Velocity, where some of those guys that jumped into it had never done comps before had never even moved barbells very well before. And you know, now they're getting into events where they're throwing 60, 70, 80 kilos overhead. Um, you know, some of the boys are throwing 100, 110 overhead. Like for, for that aspect, yes, it's all well and good winning a competition or winning an event, but that's a huge win for an individual. Um, we had plenty of people doing, taking on extra sessions, coming in extra early, staying back, doing extra bits and pieces to get to this level um, that they were expected to compete at. And seeing them on the day doing doing things that they couldn't have done eight weeks ago was pretty awesome. Everyone put in a lot of hard work and it, yeah, it did pay off in the end. Yeah. 
So event seven, a floating event. We introduced a run that we announced on the Friday. So athletes had no idea about this previously. They all came to game time under the impression that they'd be doing six events. Um, and upon arrival, we told everyone they'd actually be doing a seventh event. I was pretty stoked to see some of the guys just immediately talk to their partner and just see some of them like either drop their face or just be like, yeah, sick. Like both reactions were cool. Some people were like, oh, we're in trouble. And some people were like, yeah, that's sick. I'm keen to hit it. Running's one thing, but running in the heat with a weight vest on is another. And it was pretty exciting to tell everyone that they'd have to do this run that they had no idea about. So tight on the chest. With these puppies on, we're going 100 mile an hour. <laughs> we're going to be cutting laps, burning the soles of these things. No, that's definitely not happening. Hey. Particularly for the scaled guys, event six was the one that a lot of them were nervous for. So they had to do double unders and they also had to do um, burpee pull-ups. At the time they thought, well before the event was released, they all thought they would have to just do strict pull-ups. And that's what people have been training for for the last 10 weeks. A lot of people have been nervous about the pull-ups. Um, so I think they were a bit relieved to have them as burpee pull-ups on the day. And I think a lot of people exceeded their expectations in event six. I, I heard a lot of the guys talking afterwards about how they were so happy that 10 weeks ago they couldn't even do five double unders in a row. And here they were on the day doing 40 double unders. So it was pretty cool to watch that and see how far everyone's come training for those specific movements. The rope climb double unders and snatches, that was, um Again, what all the athletes have said was the most fun. And as I said, I think leading it from four into five where the lower body burn was obviously quite high. Uh, and then going into something that was a little bit more upper body, a little bit more technical, I think was pretty cool. Um, from what I've heard and from what everyone had said at the time and you know, post event, everyone did really enjoy that, which was really good to hear and really good to see. I think it's a good way to end the weekend. It was also a good chance for those who were sort of vying for some spots or vying for some points or vying for some whatever it might've been. Um, those teams really had the opportunity to really push against each other. Um, I'd say the event actually exceeded my expectations. It turned out to be a lot bigger than I expected. Um, when I came on board to help organise the event, I kind of just had the idea that it would be like it was last year in the, in the 2019 game time when it was in a much smaller gym with kind of ma mainly just athletes from Velocity itself. Um, I knew it would be including a lot of other athletes this year, but I didn't quite realise the high level of standard it would be at. Um, and the amount of turnout we got as well, just from spectators and supporters and sponsors and just everyone that was involved with the event, it, it turned out to be pretty massive and it definitely exceeded expectations um, that I had and I'm sure it's only going to get bigger in the years to come.
I think we'd started planning for game time 2021 about two weeks before we'd even done game time 2020. So there's plenty of plans um, for next year's event. I think obviously it was a lot bigger this year, but I think it's only going to double in size for next year. Um, I can't give away too much because it's, it's going to be full of more surprises, I'm sure. But there's, yeah, there's huge plans for next year. Yeah, there's obviously big goals always in place. Well, I am one person to have, I suppose, goals that sometimes aren't achievable. And uh, it's one of those things where I try everything I can to make them happen. And I know the girls don't really love it, but that's just sort of how I am. Um, so the plan for me and the goals for me moving forward with game time is definitely to just have it so it continuously goes on the rise. Um, you know, the, the best competition in the world is obviously the CrossFit Games and all countries and states have their own big, big events and I would love for game time to be on the national level where there are people coming from you know, other states and you know, potentially international or whatever it might be. But um, for the years to come, the direct years to come, let's say a two to three sort of timeline, I just want it to be that there are more athletes and um, it just being that there's getting out and bigger and bigger. The more exposure we can get from bigger and better athletes or bigger and better vendors or bigger and better sponsors or uh, you know, whatever it might be, that's going to therefore create more hype and create more awareness and reach, which will then hopefully create more money and which will hopefully then create more donations going towards the Smith family. So in relation to the next two to three years, I'd love for it to just get bigger and bigger. Um, I've definitely got a few plans already in place for 2021 and I'm hoping from those things alone that should then take us to another level uh, and then from there it's just trying to compete with the big dogs and the big comps that are out there and again using the platform in the sense that that's how we're going to make as much money as possible for the Smith family. I love seeing people do what they are passionate about and then add another dimension to it that is going to you know, help other people through a, a charity relationship or or sponsorship or some sort of engagement in the community. I think it's fantastic. So to see people raising money for the Smith family um, is absolutely inspiring. And I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to every athlete that competed and was involved in the event and raised money for the work of the Smith family, the organisers of the event. We just really appreciate what you're doing to support this very, very important work that we do.